so I work on System D. Uh, I'm an uh, upstream developer, and I also uh, maintain System D in Fedora. And um, I work on a. Uh, no, 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 no. That's not good. Interesting. Uh, I, I also work on um, like related technologies, and one of those related technologies is uh, the bootloader and the interviews that are used afterwards. And uh, I, I'm talking about the project to uh, simplify the way that we uh, construct interviews and um, well, to make the boot process simpler. So, uh, so. Uh, what is the initid? Uh, it's a small file system that the bootloader uh, passes to the kernel, and uh, the purpose of the uh, initid is to um, well, it has one main uh, reason to exist. It's so that the uh, the kernel um, uh, can mount really complicated uh, storage. So. Uh, uh, the kernel itself can can handle uh, a root file system uh, that is simple. It, it can handle, for example, a single partition. But if we have uh, encrypted data or uh, RAID arrays or uh, LVM and stuff like that, uh, it is too complicated for the kernel to model on its own. So it will uh, unpack a very simple uh, system into memory start the system and then this the, the, the system uh, starts quickly uh, mounts the real uh, file system and switches to the zero file system and uh, I want to mention that uh, in this talk I'll be using uh, the terms interd and interfs uh, and uh, interchangeably and interd is uh, an other uh, technology that involves an actual file system image uh, and in CamFS did away with the image part and we just have a bunch of files that we unpack into a temporary file system in memory and, and uh, well, this is our, our uh, in CamFS in 3D. Um, so uh, how does it work right now? Um, we use Dracut. Uh, and Trackwood is a, a, a complicated beast implemented in a bash. And so we have bash scripts managing other bash scripts um, and also non bash scripts. Uh, and uh, Trackwood has a functionality that is um, uh, used to construct the inter the image, but it also has functionality that is used in the interd image when it boots so so there are like those two 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 parts and uh this it can be even split further so uh if check with modules uh, that are parts that provide some functionality so for example we could have a module for lvm and we could have a module for networking and, and stuff like that and there are dependencies between modules so so one module requires another one or conflicts with some other module. Um, and the Dracut also has, so Dracut provides uh, mechanisms to, to do dependency resolution. Uh, it has uh, helpers to install different kinds of things. Um, a very important one is the ability to install uh, an executable. So we tell Dracut to install an executable and it will pull in the executable and all the libraries that this executable links to. Um, uh, so that the uh, binary can actually execute uh, properly. Uh, but it also has helpers for UDEV roles and kernel modules and, and uh, different stuff. Uh, and so, so Dracut will execute those scripts, they will produce the image, then Dracut will zip up this image, put it in the right place, and then after we reboot, Dracut also drives the execution, so controls what happens in the interd, and um, some of the things that are involved are uh, normal programs, and some of the things are uh, 
scripts and helpers specific to draft. Now, um, this is pretty complex. And if we, it, it kind of makes sense if we look at the evolution of init RDs um, over time. So, um, initially, when, when init RDs were uh, started to be used, uh, computers were much slower and memory was slow, this was slow, uh, CPUs were slow, so like unpacking of a large archive uh, to have a large uh, int RD image would, would be very painful. Uh, so people created int RDs that were very uh, customized. So like, for example, it could be a, uh, it could use busybox and it could have some custom written scripts to do some, some, some very specific things. But people wanted more functionality uh, and over time, there was a natural pressure to uh, take programs from the host system uh, and add them in full to the interd. So like, for example, you want to support a VM, you don't want to implement the whole thing again. So you, you pull in the, the, the binaries from the, from the system. But still the environment was very special. Uh, and at some point, uh, one of the programs that uh, Jack would start pulling in into the interd uh, was systemd. And if you let systemd run uh, in any environment, so on, a, on, a real, on real hardware, or on um, in a virtual machine or in an interd, it will set up the system always in pretty much the same way. So uh, it will like mount well, slash proc and slash sys and slash dev and slash dev PTS uh, and uh, set limits and environment variables and the host name. Um, so if you are running, uh, if you are a program running underneath system D, uh, in the interd and in the real host system, uh, you are running in pretty much the same environment. And um, uh, so, so I would call this almost normal, but we still have some custom bits. And, and I'm, I'm uh, well, the, the idea is to remove those remaining custom bits and just let system D uh, uh, handle uh, all of the uh, runtime environment in the interd uh, and just use normal programs and normal services that we use, you would use on the host. So um, I want to draw a parallel to, to, a tra to the transition from uh, XORG to Wayland uh, in three aspects. So uh, the system that, that we have uh, for, for creating in interds, it uh, evolves over time and it addresses problems that 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 were um, uh, valid ten years ago, uh, but it, but it, and computing environment has changed. The, the CPUs much are much faster, uh, and we don't really want to optimize the size of the interd that much. We don't need to do that, uh, and also if we are using uh, binaries that are compiled um, piece of scripts. Uh, there isn't really that much flexibility in what you can put in the interd anyway. So, uh, and it, I mean, in some ways, like like with X, that X was addressing problems uh, that were valid problems, but the, the, the solutions were really complicated. And at some point, people said, "Well, okay, let's try with a with a completely new approach, much simpler." Uh, and uh, the push to this for this change was done from the inside. So. Um, it was the ex maintainers, ex developers who, who introduced the new system, and uh, something similar is happening here. Uh, uh, I'm giving the talk, but I'm working on this project with uh, Lukasz Nekrin and Michal Sekretash, who are uh, um, and and Leonard Pottering, uh, and other folks who help maintain Dracut in in Fedora and Rail, and who are uh, uh, Dracut developers, uh, and. Uh, the third aspect that is kind of the same is that uh, the, the new system and the old system have to coexist uh, for years because, um, uh, well, we provide something new, but there is a long tail functionality that is very hard to re-implement uh, and we have to be prepared to, to use, um, I mean, to let people switch back and forth between the two when it makes sense for them. Of course, 
here the, the problem was the interdis is way way smaller but i think it's i mean I, it's kind of similar so uh so why, why is the interdis so special um uh, if if we look at this from the point of the view of the kernel actually the interd is the kernel doesn't care uh, it's just a file system and it's what's well, a temporary file system in memory so it's gone after your reboot but uh, you start the programs and uh, do things in exactly the same way and uh, the times before system d uh, I mean, for example, in the interd, you, you might not have slash proc mounted or something like that. So things were much different. But with system D, uh, the, the, the environment is very similar to the to the real one. And in fact, we have to uh, use a special file to tell programs that they are running in the uh, interd. So we have slash etc interd release instead of slash etc os release. Um, and they're like, cosmetic differences. So for, for example, the kernel will invoke slash init instead of slash has been init for some reason. Um, and uh, uh, I want to highlight the, the, the fact that uh, there is nothing special that we would want to do in the interd that we wouldn't want to do in the host system at some point. So uh, like if we have ability to, to mount a degraded RAID array uh, in the um, uh, in the inter RD uh, environment, then we certainly want to have the ability to, to mount this degraded RAID array uh, in the real system. And the same applies for, for pretty much any other thing. And it also goes the other way. Um, so you might think that, we, for example, we don't need Bluetooth in the in RD environment, but uh, let's say that you have a, a Bluetooth keyboard and um, well, and you need to do some some debugging or some uh, type in some password or whatever. Then of course you want to use your keyboard, so you need Bluetooth. Uh, you uh, there there was a wonderful talk earlier today about accessibility, and if you are using a screen there, you also want to use the screen there um, in the in, in the interd. So you want the sound system to be working, and so on and so on. So so. There is this natural tendency to, to want to be able to uh, just take any program uh, that you, including the whole stack of dependencies that you use in the real system and plug it in, into the interd. And not, not all, not at all times, but at least optionally. Um, yes, and uh, I want to highlight the fact that uh, in the past, maybe there things are done with scripts, but now we do them with, with demons or with, with compiled programs, and we just don't want to implement the, the things the second time. Uh, and uh, also, we shouldn't try to do packaging twice, right? If, if we have a, um, some, some program and it gains a new file, uh, the, the maintainers of the package will take care of this. But then if the program is used in the interd, then we probably have to also adjust uh, configuration of, of output and, and it just means duplicate work, duplicate packaging work. Um, so, uh, to simplify things, uh, we have those various aspects of functionality of, of output uh, and uh, we can replace them easily by, by other stuff that we have. So, uh, the uh, modules and, and dependencies between them, we can, if we build the interd from rpms then rpm has a full-blown dependency system and we just use that uh, we have to uh, create the, the interd but if we are using rpms then we get this for free so basically we tell dnf um, to take a set of uh, packages install it to a temporary directory and uh, create a um, CPIO archive. So an init RAMFS is a compressed CPIO archive. So uh, and there's some additional tweaks to this. So you probably wouldn't in practice want to do it this way, but it's uh, entirely feasible. Um, we have the, the, the runtime in the interd, so, so the event uh, uh, queue, 
And this is what System D does, and it does it quite well. We are already using System D in the System D in the init ID, uh, so it's more about removing things than adding anything new. And uh, all the other functionality, uh, well, here it is. This 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 is more complex. Um, uh, the mm, some functionality is only implemented as, for example, as, as traffic modules, uh, and it might be necessary to either uh, take those programs and make them into separate uh, packages or, or implement them. Uh, this, is, this is a bit more complicated. And in general, the idea is that we will use normal programs, the same ones that you can install in the whole system in the interview. Um, so why, um, right? It's about simplifying things. It's about not re-implementing stuff again. And RPM is very good at installing packages and packagers are uh, doing, I mean, a lot of packaging work is figuring out dependencies between, between RPMs uh, and specifying them in, a, in, a, in the appropriate way. So we can just reuse that. Mm. Uh, a big difference is that's kind of like becoming moving towards more modern approaches to, to software development is that uh, right now we uh, when we are building in RD, we take files from the host installation and copy them over into the interd. So if there is some local modification, it gets carried over. If there is corruption to one of the um, files, it is also carried over. And the uh, initrd is, can be subtly different on every system. And uh, if we just take RPMs and install RPMs, well, RPMs have checksums, um, we produce an immutable image and the image is reproducible and it looks always the same on every system if we use the same recipe to build it. So uh, this is more like, our, our current approaches to packaging, we want stuff to be uh, predictable and reproducible. Mm. And, uh, well, yes, the, the idea is to, to get rid of a bash from the, from the boot sequence. Um, so this parallels the transition to system D uh, with uh, some, um, I mean, people like the idea, but it was painful to some extent. Yes, things need to be to be uh, some things need to be implemented, and it will also be true here. Uh, but in the end, we get a system that is simpler, um, and uh, we don't. Uh, if uh, I mean, nobody wants to maintain uh, debug track with issues because they have the environment is very special, and it's just much easier to to say uh, yes, this uh, this program has this issue, and it, this. this just try it out on a real system, debug it there, and if it is solved there, it, it should also be solved in the end RD. Um, and the last two aspects are kind of social. Uh, so uh, um, if right now, because the environment is so special, it's not clear who should own bugs uh, in the end RD. So this is like the, the, the for example, if we have something goes wrong with LVM. Uh, is it the LVM maintainers? Is it the maintainers of track? With, is it uh, system D? Uh, just too many parts involved. Uh, and uh, by simplifying the system, we, we, we kind of also simplify the, the handling of bugs. Uh, and we don't do work twice. So, you know, in the, in the normal community spirit of open source, uh, things are immediately reused in other places. And, uh, uh, well, the, the the project to do this uh, is currently implemented as a um, something called MKOS, MKOSI in RD. So uh, MKOSI uh, make operating system image is a, a program that was developed to test other programs. So, for example, System D during development, and it takes a list of packages um, and quickly builds uh, an, an operating system image from those packages. 
it supports many different distributions, but in particular DNF. Um, and uh, then you can take this, this 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 image and install your program that you want to test on top of that of, of the image and, and for example boot a, a virtual machine with with your installed program. But for for the purposes of the interdis, we don't care about the second part. We just care about this first part. So we take a list of packages and um, install an image and some some small processing on it. Um, and MKSI interd the project is actually a set of uh, configuration files for MKSI that tell uh, it what packages to install to successfully build uh, any interd that can be used to, for example, boot a machine with LVM and, and, and logs. Um, uh, and uh, uh, I looked at some alternatives. So Kiwi is a, a system to build uh, operating system images developed uh, by OpenSUSE. Uh, I mean, it's a cross-community project. Uh, and OS build is something similar from Red Hat. Um, and <coughs> it seemed easier to, to adapt MKSI to do the necessary tweaks that are necessary for ERDs. Uh, but uh, I think that the main idea is to use RPMs and and and, and DNF, uh, and maybe in the future uh, MKSI interd will be replaced by I don't know OS built in already. This is entirely feasible. Um, so uh, what's what's the general plan? So uh, in the first phase, and we are in quite early in this phase. Uh, ETRD images are generated locally. So the, there is a, a script you invoke uh, and you get a, a CPI archive. Uh, you put it in the right place and, uh, well, you have the ETRD. So just like with Dracut. And once we have that working um, and we, we cover the important use cases, we want to move to stage two uh, where we centralize the building of ETRDs, right? Because if the images are reproducible and every build gives you the same result. Doing it over and over is uh, on every machine. It doesn't really make sense. And um, uh, if, right now, if you install a kernel, uh, the slowest part is actually generation of the interd. Uh, so if we centralize this, we uh, will save some, some speed on, uh, on the end, save some time on the end user machines. Uh, and once we have this generation, at some point we want to add signing. So uh, kernels uh, are signed, uh, the bootloaders are signed, and we can also sign uh, a set of interd uh, images. And the the end goal uh, is that you, if you are using secure boot, uh, you can uh, check the signature. Uh, because right now with secure boot, we check signatures on, on the bootloader and on the kernel, but not on the interd, which turns the kernel what to do. So it's a pretty big hole uh, and in the usual scheme. So, um, well, we, we want to extend this to, to interds too. Um, and uh, so how, how does it work? Um, well, right now, if you install a kernel, uh, the kernel has a, a scriptlet to uh, that calls kernel install uh, add. Uh, and um, kernel install has a set of, of plugins to uh, do different things, like uh, in particular, particular, one of them is to generate the interd. So uh, uh, using Tracut, and we have a, a a new uh, kernel install plugin that will generate an uh, MKSI interd um, image, and well, it does it by by calling MKSI with the right configuration for the for the specific kernel version, and uh, the kernel install puts in uh, puts the the interd in the right place. So basically, uh, if you install the this is not not. All of this is not packaged yet, but um, probably with the next version of systemd, uh, 
you just be able to upgrade the kernel and if you um, put the right configuration file in the right place, you will get an uh, MKSI inter the image and it should boot your machine if you like. Um, so the images that we generate, um, they are not the same as, as not uh, as optimized as traffic images. They are maybe twice as big. Um, and if we unpack them, it turns, well, the, the contents are about twice as big. It's, uh, you know, a, a, an extra 100 megabytes is uh, noticeable, but it's uh, feasible for, for uh, to, to work with this. I mean, it's not too painful. Um, we have been doing, uh, uh, we have been doing um, optimization work uh, on system D, for example, to reduce the, the dependency tree of libraries. But in fact, it uh, affects Jarkut and uh, MKSI in their D images in a very similar way. So, so the, the ratio will probably not change. But if we look inside of those images and compare what changed, um, the big difference is that uh, uh, MKSI in their D images have lots of kernel modules. And um, well, the, the general idea is that instead of um, handpicking which uh, modules uh, should be installed, we just install everything from the kernel core package and the, the, the modules, not, not the kernel itself. Uh, and at some point, I hope that the kernel will split out a um, kernel modules in the sub package or something like that, uh, because the kernel maintainers are better positioned uh, to to set to to know which modules should be should be part of the MKRD, and I don't know if the kernel adds or removes modules in different kernel versions. Uh, this should be done at the level of the packaging of the kernel, uh, and not externally. I think so. Um, well, there's this big difference, but I hope it will be uh, changed by kernel packaging at some point. And if we look at slash bin and slash s bin. Uh, so the, the actual executables, there's maybe two times difference. Um, and again, this is because Dracut handpicks uh, which executables to install. And here I'm just installing a set of uh, RPM packages that I think are necessary. And um, so, so there's, there's a bit more stuff, but it's not enough to matter. What takes a lot of space is the dependencies, so the libraries. And it turns out that already we, it is kind of the same in both cases because um, we have lots of programs, but they share most of the dependencies. So if you install at least some of the programs, you end up with pretty much the same set of libraries. And um, then there are some, some more complicated differences, like, uh, I don't know, three megabytes of licenses and uh, Maybe we could remove them, but if at some point we want to distribute the inter D as a separate uh, thing, then we, according to um, to the rules, we'll probably have to include the licenses. They compress pretty well, so maybe it doesn't matter that much. Um, then we have zone info files, and then you, you ask yourself, does it matter if the inter D is able to display local time properly? Um, Probably it should. Uh, is it worth five megabytes? Well, I don't know, that's a tough question. Uh, and, and so on and so on. Um, uh, and uh, one big difference is that uh, Dracut interdees do not include um, the hardware database. So when you uh, put the machine and you, for example, you have a, a, a keyboard which requires some keys to be remapped because they are labeled improperly, um, you will not get this remapping in the inner D. I think that this is not a good idea. I mean, it's it's the, the hardware database is pretty large, and a large part of it is um, just descriptions of hardware that you will not use in the inner D. Uh, but some of the stuff is really necessary, and uh, uh, if we add like more user facing functionality into the inter D, then most likely we want to have like the full hardware database description and the full UDEF rules so that things behave 
the same as in the real system. So maybe we'll just end up with those slightly bigger in 3D images. Maybe it's worth to pay this price. Um, and so I kind of uh, glossed over this problem. Uh, but uh, the reason why Dragon builds images um, locally is that you want to do modifications and variants and so on. Um, and the partial answer to this is a system called system D sysx, so system extensions. Uh, it's something that works uh, on the whole system, uh, and uh, it also works in the inter-D. It's a, a system where you give a, a, a part of an oper of operating system image to system D, and it mounts it on top of the, the real file system using overlay FS. So uh, this sounds kind of complicated. Uh, so let's say that you, you want to have uh, you have a system without SSHD and you want to add SSHD. So uh, you, you take your system and you uh, uh, create a, 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 slash, a system, a, a partition with slash user that contains the contents of the SSHD package uh, and maybe any other packages that SSHD requires uh, recursively that are not part of the of your base image, and uh, you create this um, this 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 this, uh, this image on its own. It's not usable, right? Because it requires other stuff that is not included. So it's it's pretty small, and it, um, the only way to use it is to mount it uh, on top uh, of, of a, a compatible uh, base. Uh, and um, so the, the idea here is that we will build system uh, sysx for the interd to I don't know add um, like uh, rescue mode or uh, or Bluetooth or uh, SSHD or um, sound or sound with a screen reader and so on. Uh, and then people will be able to mix and match uh, to get uh, the appropriate functionality. Uh, and uh, we will not have to build uh, 100 uh, different variants of the in 3D. Uh, because if we want to do it centrally, we kind of have to cover most functionality with uh, some um, pre-built set of things. And um, the important thing about SysX is that they support um, embedded signatures. So uh, a normal uh, way that the, the SysX, SysX is delivered is a um, that you have a, a disk image uh, with a GPT table, and it has three partitions. One partition contains the file system with the, with the data that you that the, the actual contents. And then you have a uh, variety partition that uh, specifies hashes for the data partition. And then you have a third, uh, even smaller partition that contains a signature for the uh, variety data. So uh, system D will, um, before it uses the extension, it will verify that the signature uh, is correct and it matches the DM variety data. And then the kernel will verify that the data partition matches the uh, very key data, uh, and uh, and it's a bit complex, but it's uh, efficient and uh, flexible. Um, so, uh, uh, before I move to the implementation, so let me uh, reiterate. So, so the idea is that with in the end, uh, with secure boot, you have this approach where uh, the the bootloader. Well, the, the, the firmware verifies the bootloader, and the bootloader verifies the kernel uh, through a signature, and the interd through a signature. And then we, we put the interd, uh, and the interd uh, wants to add extensions, and the, it will verify the signatures on the extensions, uh, and uh, then mount them. So it's all, and everything is verified before being run. Uh, So, uh, 
we have uh, added support to build uh, SysX with MKSI2. Uh, you always build an extension on top of an existing system. So uh, we kind of review the process that is done for Interdis. Um, we uh, create a temporary uh, directory putting the, the packages for the base layer. This is pretty quick because it, it's just, it's really uh, like 100 megabytes or so. Uh, and then create an overlay FS. Uh, it starts with the interd as the lower layer. And then we put the an empty uh, upper layer, initially empty. And into this upper layer, we inject packages, whatever, for example, SSHD and the dependencies. Uh, and then we discard the lower layer and the upper layer because it becomes our data partition for the sysx. And then maybe we, we add Verity and the signature if you want. Um, and, well, I mean, this, this MKSI does this kind of automatically you specify list of packages and you get the uh, extension. So uh, what works right now? Um, you can create an inter this. Um, if you install the kernel scripts, you can also get the interd generated automatically when you install a new version of the kernel. Um, you can build extensions, you can load them. Uh, and like basic uh, laptop use cases are covered. Um, we have been using this on our laptops for a few months and it seems to, to work without too many issues. Um, you can put virtual machines. Uh, I mean, LVM, Lux, this is this all works. Um, <coughs> emergency mode also works, uh, hibernation and resume. Um, the French Exumsal has been uh, working on adding automated testing for this. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we quickly found out is that iSCSI does not work. There's some uh, supporting track with, to, to figure out the um, kernel parameters for iSCSI and we don't have a and an implementation for this that is separate from the Um And uh, I won't go over the list, but there's like a uh, hundred different things that uh, might work or might not work. We don't really know until they have been properly tested. Uh, but in principle, uh, everything that works on the host should also work on the, should work in the interd. So uh, it's more of a question of, um, checking things and figuring figuring out if there are any bugs rather than creating anything from scratch. So um, to summarize, uh, so what, what are the main uh, ideas? Build an interd from system packages. Uh, let the um, normal package installation uh, mechanisms uh, to, the, to, to do complicated work. And in the in the RD itself, let system D um, uh, take care of the, the whole uh, runtime. Um, so basically, remove things um, and do everything in the in the RD the same as on the host. And uh, well, use the uh, various system D functionality for extensions and. Um, signature verification uh, and uh, if that works we want to, to move to the, to the next phase where we kind of centralize the building of the images and at some point also allow people to, to, to uh, put this into secure boot uh, and uh, those are links to documentation um, also for for uh, DM variety uh, and overlay FS. And I think I have time for some questions. So sh should I start with the first question? Um, Jacquard is used in all kinds of distributions, also many outside of the RPM universe. How would they deal with this uh, if their packages are not managed by RPM? Well, it's a, a beautiful question. I would say sorry, because... sorry. Hoping just kick me out. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm saying the first question. Um, 
NKSI is distribution independent. Uh, it supports DNF, uh, uh, Debian, Ubuntu, uh, Gentoo, Alma Linux, uh, 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 Rocky Linux, uh, and uh, Arch, at least, and maybe uh, Photon. So uh, if this works for RPMs, it should also work for all those other distributions. Uh, because I know we have the situation where uh, some parts of the stack are shared between distributions. So in particular, system D and all the units and the higher level programs. And <coughs> the, the init RD generation is one of the few remaining things which are significantly different between, between distributions. And I think that with this approach, we can unify uh, things. Well, if, if we convince other distributions to use it, but we will see. Okay, so next question is, should we start moving this approach and how could we can prepare for this? So um, that's, I, I don't have a, a, a very good answer. If you if you go to the um, MKISI InterD project on, on GitHub, we have a, a list of uh, to-do items. Um, and in particular, it means, you know, testing with uh, 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 different parts of the functionality uh, and kind of improving the, the, the coverage and, and figuring out what works. Uh, so we have to finish this phase first and then once it actually all works then we can kind of move with the um, further phases. Um, so I think that you cannot really prepare in any way for this except that if you want to get involved with, with, the, with the testing and the development then this would be very welcome. Okay, next question is from Timothy. How do we support local configuration changes and have those signed, verified? Yes, so um, in general, uh, we try to handle local configuration for the kernel command line. Um, and the, the idea is that, um, uh, well, basically you somehow verify your kernel command line and this is, uh, the the interd is is generic and it supports all kernel command lines. Um, there are, there are some uh, mechanisms to um, kind of similar to the sysx stuff for uh, additional data. Uh, for example, um, local secrets uh, and the the, um, the general idea is that you uh, store the secrets. Uh, in a file in that is uh, that the bootloader passes to the to the interd uh, and those secrets are um, encrypted uh, and uh, they are encrypted for the tpm so uh, to, to protect them from an offline attack um, and but this is for, for, for secrets, more for secrets than for configuration. The configuration is usually done for the kernel command line. But uh, maybe this will not be enough, and then we will need other mechanism to, to inject more configuration into the interd. Uh, it's, an, uh, I, it's an open question to some extent. Okay, thank you for your answer. A question from a chat. So the eventual goal would be to make the init RD uh, another package installed along um, along other packages. Yes, yes. The 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 init RD images would be uh, built, uh, and you you would build the kernel in Koji, and then you would uh, this would fire off a build of init RDs, and then there would be like another package, um, and then. The package, well, the, like right now, the kernel package, uh, it has a kernel in user lib, and then there is some some hook to take the kernel and copy it to the boot partition, and this the same would happen here. Okay, uh, another question from you: If uh, mcc init rd is used by default, then is it possible to drop system md udev trigger dot service? which triggered at events for all devices, possibly, already processed by UDFD previously? Um, so 
the thing is that we will, will not have all packages installed in the interd so the um, it's possible that you have more roles in the whole system uh, so we want to avoid a situation where we have different roles but um, like special roles in the in the interd but you, you always have to be prepared for the situation where you uh, um, have more programs installed so i think we will need to do the trigger anyway because we need to, to handle this case uh, but maybe we can get rid of it i don't know okay thank you and the last question i mean instead of a retriggering an event u events is it possible to export u dev database from init rd file system to switched file system um so I think that right now we, um, when UDEV stops, uh, it, um, I mean, we want to restart UDEV and the, the version of UDEV that is running in the whole system might be a different version. So it will want to rebuild the database anyway. Um, uh, maybe it would be possible, but, um, I think that UDEF um, well, wasn't really, uh, I mean, it's not prepared for this. Um, we probably could do it, but if, if we have to re-trigger anyway for, for additional rules, uh, then um, this optimization wouldn't really give us that much. Uh, so, uh, like, um, with Trackwood, we have the situation where we uh, mm, completely drop the user database uh, in the entirety. And this part is removed. It kind of lives until we restart UDEV. Um, so this is, and we are already handling things a bit different. Uh, and um, maybe we could even make UDEV more continuous, like with systemd, right? Systemd serializes the state and passes it to the to the right distributed instance. But this would require some refactoring of UDEF. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, hasn't been. Uh, we haven't really discussed this upstream. Okay. Thank you for your answer, and thank you everyone for your questions. It seems that uh, this topic interested a lot of people. Uh, Zbyshek will be in our uh, virtual uh, virtual venue also, uh, work adventure, so uh, you have a link in a chat, so feel free to hop in there and discuss uh, this topic more with Zbyshek. And thank, thank you Zbyshek for your, uh, for your um, presentation, it was great. Have a nice day and everyone uh, enjoy your lunch, lunch break and there's a uh, lightning talks in room one and also a session to a little bit of move your body around before lunch uh, in main stage. <laughs>